now. We're finally here. Sorry for the delay. We had a few technical difficulties, but we are inside. Catch the Harrison Drop at the Phoenix Point in maybe five, ten minutes. It's on the exact time. We've got with us here at the Hangouts Clara Hawkwitz from Space.com and Eric Berger, the Sci Guy from the Houston Chronicle. They're going to be asking questions a little while later, but of course, we also want all of your questions as well. You can send us in a number of ways. Of course, the best way would be the just Google Plus Hangout itself. Uh, but you can also send questions in from Facebook at facebook.com slash NASA. Or on Twitter, twitter.com slash NASA, uh, and use the hashtag AskRion. A-A-K-O-R-I-O-N. Uh, like I said, we've got a few minutes before the actual parachute chest hangout, or the parachute chest again. Um, so we will be here. Tell us a little bit about it. We have CJ John. Thanks so much for joining us today. Why don't you tell us about what you do? Okay. Uh, well, so, I guess part of that is we'll make sure that they work no matter what, what, what we're on our day, right? 
That's why it's, um, when we do the test, after the test, we collect a lot of data both on board uh, the test vehicle and from imagery. We have uh, several other aircraft flying at different altitudes uh, to capture imagery. And imagery is an important piece of data that we get or we're able to do imagery analysis for the test to evaluate the performance as well. In addition, after every test, we inspect the hardware very thoroughly because we want to make sure that every element and every piece of them experience something um, visually that we can identify as a particular issue, even though it may not have failed. And so every time we do a test, we learn something and we feed uh, the change uh, into the design. And we do that routinely so that at the end of the future development in this series, and all the testing that we do out there, that's right. When we come out here again, uh, in addition to the different environmental conditions that appear the system is deployed in, we want to test out uh, several different failure scenarios, even ones that may not necessarily uh, happen. But still, potential, uh, in other words, we're not in requirements, but we still want to understand one more level of the um, beyond requirements to make sure that it is something. It is still a robust system. Yeah, so today, one of the goals we're going to see is when a three main character is deployed. Uh, one of the three main parachutes uh, we're going to simulate. We're going to simulate a failure of that main parachute. So um, after the three main parachutes in flight, um, one of the three main parachutes will simulate a failure in the riser, uh, so that uh, it could be a scenario where um, it was cut too early by the riser cutter, or it can simulate a failure scenario where um, it was an overload condition. And the price has to pay. So either, either of those conditions could, we're, we're trying to simulate what would happen. So it won't actually, um, watch it get cut away during the test, correct? That's correct, yeah. So here you'll be watching the actual failure scenario that we're simulating in uh, the demonstration. So we'll see the three enormous parachutes in flight, and then one of them will fall away. That's right. If everything goes well. Yep, one of them will fall away. Um, and we're doing it in a sequence too. Every time we come out here, we're trying to get as much data as we can. We can There is an additional thing we're not doing today. We have a small problem with the load and the location system. And we're trying to get a Yeah, so uh, our control model will be great. You don't have to look in 
know if this is uh, able to be seen on the video. Uh, essentially, this is the vehicle pack that is coming out of the aircraft. Uh, it, it can really consist of two different uh, test pieces. So one is the, what we call the parachute test vehicle to simulate the Orion spacecraft capsule. Uh, the other piece is on uh, coming out of the aircraft. So when it comes out, uh, these two are going to separate, and there is risk involvement. A programmer parachute is deployed. Uh, a programmer set of programmer parachutes is deployed, which further decelerates this into the right conditions that starts the sequence of the Orion parachute system. All this will probably be uh, kind of like a knot. Um, so it will probably be more when we get close to the main deployment. So I think we're starting to. Yeah, I think we're just about there. So we're going to look at China. Could be a little difficult to catch with our camera, um, but we'll get it for you as soon as we can and follow it along. And uh, uh, we can kind of uh, get this uh, 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 So what we have right now is uh, on the radio, they're calling up the event. So we can listen along. Great, thanks. Uh, and I know it's 35,000 feet, so it's going to be a little little hard to see right away, but I think we can make it out down here, right? Yep, you can see the Very light white against blue, so we'll, we'll be able to get that out. Now, the program has released, and the two most trooper drills are deployed. So, we'll further decelerate under the two drills until we reach uh, about 8,000 feet, and most two drills will be cut away, and the three pilot parachutes will be border deployed to pull out the three main parachutes. Hopefully y'all are able to start making it out a little bit. It's getting a little clearer. Still just wide against the blue at this point. But it'll get more more visible as it gets closer. Really important parachutes. 
great. So how, um, what speed will they land at? I'll go 24 miles an hour with the speed of the land at. Onto the water. And I guess on your ticket. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, with the simulation and the 102 version. Right. And we talked about, you know, it, it, we, um, two parachutes is what we actually need, right, for the landing. The third is just a redundancy. Yeah, the way we're, we're kind of building the parachute system um, is that we have a parachute for each of the, of the parachutes. Um, and we just decide to deploy those pair backup parachutes at the same time. Oh, sorry. I think it's a little hard to hear you, so we'll have you speak up just a little bit, and I'm going to move your phone a little closer. Um, so it's just about touchdown now, right? Yep, it looks like right there we have touchdown. Excellent. So, good test so far, as far as we know? Yes, everything looks really good. Great, that's good news. What happens now? We're going to wait for the remainder of the parachute to uh, descend and land. Um, we also have a couple of what's called wind packs. Um, the A-17 aircraft is doing another circle, uh, and they're going to drop uh, two uh, wind packs, which collect atmospheric data, and it gives us uh, information that we use in the post processing uh, to evaluate, and it gives us the most representative conditions that these parachutes uh, at the time of flight. Okay. So we wait for all that stuff to uh, land, uh, and then once we receive um, approval from the safety officer here, uh, we go out and start to cover all of the hardware that has landed on the parachute. They have several different teams that we put together uh, to go after the different elements because they are going to be spread around uh, the, the desert floor. Uh, we have teams going after each of the main parachutes, teams going after the joint parachutes, teams going after the pilot parachutes, uh, and teams going after all the other parachutes beyond the Orion parachutes that are involved in the attraction. I just had a call from the other one to do um, uh, 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 In addition, we try to better we can't even collect, like when the droves uh, or, uh, when they fire, the lids for those droves, um, we try to try to find those. Uh, like, there's all the, the harder that we can that we can find in order to make sure we can inspect it uh, and learn from it. And y'all been working towards this test for quite a while, right? Yeah, we do testing about every three to four months up here at, in the at YPG. Uh, so the 35,000 people is an important one. Uh, so we've been working on it for some time. Uh, but they, we do have a lot of overlap with tests, given that we, we test every uh, three months, uh, roughly three to four months. Okay. Well, thanks so much for joining us. It looks like it was a great test, and I'll wait to back here a little bit more. But I think um, we actually we were had some video that will show you a few different um, views of it. I think first uh, we've got uh, kind of a record, uh, interview we recorded earlier this week before the screw module was actually loaded onto the plane, and that'll give you a look at uh, at uh, what that what that looks like up close. So we're going to switch to that now. Uh, hang with us, and we'll take questions in just a minute. Three minutes, very technical operation, but the behind the scenes on the Google Plus is a little low tech, and we're doing the best we can. We're about uh, an hour and a half away from civilization, so it's a little bit of work to get all up and running, but the, but the uh, guys who actually run the test themselves are, are clearly doing good. No? The object is one of our pilot parachutes, and each of the main parachutes is deployed by one of the pilot parachutes. One of the parachutes here. Unfortunately, we can't see in this main point the two droves. So uh, can hear me? Can you confirm that you're seeing the interview? Can you explain the quick crash course and parachutes? What are droves and pilots? Sure. So the drove parachutes are uh, order foot parachutes. Uh, uh, the orders are uh, pyrotechnically mobile. No audio? Uh, uh, we'll post it on video. Let's just we'll have a plus up of what it looks like from the previous test in the audio. Okay. Got it.
Uh, we're showing the previous test now. Yeah, you're actually you're the narrator. Okay. Um, so right now you actually should be seeing the last test. Uh, since we saw it from the ground, we thought we'd give you um, a different view of what it looks like from the air. Um, so this is the, the previous test that took place a few months ago, and we, we had a different failure scenario that we were testing that time, so it looked a little bit different um, than this one did, but this gives you an idea of what it looks like, not from 35,000 feet away on the ground. And that's when you show loading activities next. Loading activities from yesterday. Okay, and uh, we also have these are some of the loading activities um, earlier in the week, getting the the uh, capsule actually on the plane. Uh, that in itself is uh, a pretty big deal. The crew, uh, like CJ said earlier, works pretty hard uh, working up, leading up to this test, and that's kind of the final event. Uh, they've made sure that all the systems are correct, the batteries are charged. Chips are packed well and, and ready to go. All right. We're on you. Okay. So that was a look at uh, some of the up close and uh, looks at uh, the test today and the way to do it. I'm here with Chuck Woolen John, who is with the Yuma Proving Ground Public Affairs Office. He can talk a little bit about uh, Yuma and, like I said, we're we're not like the civilization. Civilization. This is a um, a really big area. So what what all do you do here? Well, uh, my job is mostly uh, public affairs office. We have 4,500 people who are together around a range that's about the size of. Uh, Today, I'm wondering how similar the parachute system on Orion is to the parachutes used on other space capsules, such as the Soyuz or even the Apollo capsules. Yes, and how is it comparable to some of the other uh, parachute systems on other spacecraft? Yeah, so uh, you know, we'll start with Apollo. Um, a lot of the inherited um, that parachute vendors in the industry have really. Uh, 
uh, there's a lot of data and information that during the Apollo uh, time period reflected on uh, the design of parachutes. So a lot of that is really the base for uh, the parachutes that we have today, um, in addition to other uh, systems that have been uh, deployed out there in industry uh, since Apollo. Uh, so we take a lot of what have the capabilities and, and the design um, and our heritage and do that as the base for the system that we fly. And uh, before Claire asks her next question, um, just a reminder that you can ask questions from home uh, several different ways. You can do it here on the Google Plus Hangout or also at the NASA Facebook account at facebook.com slash NASA. And of course, also on Twitter, to use the hashtag AskAlliance. Uh, Claire, any other questions from you? Yeah, and I'm sorry if I missed this if you said it before, but I'm wondering if the Orion is designed to land on water only, or will it ever make land landings? Uh, the Orion spacecraft is a water-only uh, landing vehicle. It is designed specifically for landing in the water. Okay, thanks very much. Okay, and we also have uh, Eric Berger, the Sci Guy from the Houston Chronicle. Eric, do you have any questions for us? Sure, good morning. Um, the question I would have is, I understand the space shuttle came back at about 18,000 miles per hour. I'm, I'm curious what the maximum speed that uh, the space shuttle came back at about 18,000 miles per hour. How, how fast is Orion designed to, uh, to come back at? How, what's the maximum reentry speed it, it could be able to handle? The maximum reentry speed for Orion. Uh, it's just on the order of 24,000 uh, miles an hour. It's, it's a relatively very high speed, a reentry speed that is uh, beyond what the, the official uh, has been capable or was capable of. Uh, the Orion vehicle and the GPS specifically is being designed uh, for the, the deep space reentry speed uh, coming from another body, such as the moon, or Mars, or an asteroid. And that's uh, quite a there's a um, space shuttle gap. I think there's about 17,000 miles per hour. Yeah, it, it is much faster. And it all depends on where you're coming from, I think. That's right. So, uh, for our first test, uh, first mission is here next year, the exploration flight test number one. Uh, I think it's going to be kind of back at a speed of about 20,000 miles per hour, and then the further we go out, the higher, uh, the, higher the speeds are, and then also the higher the temperatures for um, re-entry, so that's uh, why we need a good heat as well. Okay, uh, one other question I would have is... I think we're going to try and get some uh, shots of the helicopter coming in, but uh, just, so you, just so you know, even though you might not see it, we'll be looking for your questions. Okay. Um, uh, how many people uh, would you envision the Orion taking in these deep space missions? How many people would Orion take on the deep space missions? I think that really depends on the objective. Uh, right now, the program is evaluating uh, how to accomplish uh, a new space asteroid mission, how to accomplish different uh, types of missions. Uh, so it really can vary. Um, uh, certainly, a crew of four um, is uh, what the wrong beard always is capable of. A crew of four? Yes. Okay, Eric, any other questions? No, thank you very much. Uh, for 
that we, if we would experience a failure today and be that into the design that we would then uh, qualify to. So, yes, we have time, uh, and that's why we do these tests, uh, to provide that time to be able to react to failures and different things to be uh, determined uh, in order to modify the design. So, and that's an interesting point I know we talked about before. This test, um, we have the, the first mission coming up next year. We've already done all the tests we need for that. So these, these tests we're doing now are actually um, for something that's uh, requested at the, the first uh, current mission in 2021 at this point. Yeah, I think the key word was manned. Um, we have the ESG1 flight coming up at the end of next year, and we have done enough testing to have enough confidence uh, in the system that we're flying, which, which is really what you saw, the same system that you saw today, uh, flying on ESG1, which is unmanned uh, flight. Okay, we've um, got another question. What is the weight of the test article in comparison to the real Orion? Well, part of the beauty of, of doing the testing out here uh, with the test assets. Uh, can affect 
the, the main church to uh, material. So we want to get them in uh, in back as soon as we can. So those guys will be out there uh, pulling the main church together as soon as we back. So you mentioned in there pyros. What are, what are pyros? It sounds ominous. Yeah, uh, uh, pyrotechnics. So there's a, a different uh, piece of hardware that needs um, uh, pyrotechnics in order to, to perform. So one example again is a speech tap for the stroke parachute. Um, mortars. What mortars are the pyrotechnic device, they shoot the parachute, which is packed in the bag, they shoot it like a cannon. So they pretend like the uh, packed parachute is a cannonball and the mortar is a cannon. They shoot the parachute out into the free stream, um, but one end of the parachute is next to the vehicle. And that is essentially uh, deployed and the, the, the parachute into an inflation mode. Uh, and then the rest of the inflation happens with the parachute. So that's one example of a mortar. Uh, so we have to go and make sure that um, both systems did operate correctly and there's no leftover energy um, that could be a hazard to the people uh, working, on the recovery, working on the recovery of the vehicle. Okay. Um, keep sending your questions in. We'll take a few more before we wrap up for the day. Um, you can, again, send them in here at the Google Figure or on the NASA Facebook account, nasa.gov slash, uh, you see facebook.com slash nasa, or, uh, Twitter at, uh, just use the hashtag ask the Ryan. I think we've got a few more questions here for you. Um, how different is the parachute compared to, uh, smart parachute? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, there are different types of parachutes. Um, parachutes or, um, uh, Say a, a small vehicle re-entering the Mars atmosphere. Um, they are designed for a different mm -hmm. set of environmental conditions. Uh, primarily, they are deployed in the supersonic. Uh, in other words, the spacecraft is traveling uh, faster than the speed of sound when the parachute is deployed. Uh, that's a different type of condition environment. The parachute is designed differently to meet those conditions than these parachutes, which are deployed uh, people at velocity more on the order of hundreds of miles an hour. So, are there lessons you learn from them or certainly. can you talk to them? Yeah, certainly. And, you know, one of the, the things we do at NASA when we try to provide is using lessons learned uh, and trying to learn from uh, across the agency. Uh, so we, we have talked with, in fact, uh, uh, team members include those uh, that have worked on planetary parachute systems. Uh, and we always learn from each other on, uh, on the building of the parachute and design and, and even the analysis of the parachute. Did you watch along with everybody else as uh, Mars was like an experience he was landing on Mars? Yeah, you bet. Uh, it was, uh, one of my favorite pictures is, uh, is one that landed and they took a picture of the, of the, of the sunrise. That was uh, a very uh, neat picture. All right. I think our next question uh, from online was, uh, so will the first Orion be suborbital? I guess that's probably the first question. But that's next year, and I think that's very incredible. Yes, yeah, sir. The Ryan program, the ESP-1 uh, uh, vehicle, they're going to send that vehicle outside of Earth orbit. Uh, and the reason they're doing that is to be able to achieve an entry speed once it comes back to Earth and we enter that simulates uh, emissions from either the moon or an asteroid, and it evaluates the performance of our thermal protection system or the heat shield, uh, which is a, a really important uh, piece of information for our PS1. Right, so there are good reasons for that. Uh, maybe we can check back uh, now with our guest, um, Clara uh, from Space.com. How are you doing over there? Any more questions for us? Oh, I'm sorry. I couldn't understand what Brandy said. I'm just checking to see if you had any more questions for us, Clara. Oh, I do actually. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I'm wondering, is the parachute, parachute system that you tested today the same system um, in all its specifications that will be sent on the first test flight in 2014? Yeah. It's above the pizzeria. Or whatever. <laughs> Okay, any, 
any other questions there? Yeah, can you tell us um, more broadly uh, how are plans coming along for the first crewed test flight, and is that still planned for 2021? Yeah, the, the Orion program continues to evaluate the schedule and look at uh, the mission, mission, future missions that we have. You know, obviously, a lot of focus is on EFT-1 for next year. Uh, we have the EM-1 mission uh, that will still be uh, uh, uncrewed, and then the EM-2 mission uh, in the 2019 to 2021 20, time frame. Uh, that is still the schedule that, that the program is working to. So, and just to, for people who may not know, uh, again, the EFT-1 is exposure flight test one next year. That's the first mission for Orion. It's going to go up about 3,600 uh, feet into orbit, which is um, uh, higher than the International Space Station, higher than uh, any that's built for humans. It's been in more than 40 years. And come back to Earth, and we'll get a chance to test out the parachute system coming from space and the heat, and the heat shield and, then, and a number of other things. Uh, then after that, in 2017, we're scheduled to have the exploration mission one. That's going to be the first time we are launched on top of the space launch system that NASA is building, our new rocket, to allow us to get into deep space. And then uh, after that, our first uh, mission with a uh, astronaut on it, and it's uh, exploration mission two, currently scheduled for 2021. So, um, like we said earlier, uh, you know, uh, Sorry about that. Uh, I was just wondering, you know, when we might know when today's test is likely to be successful or not. When you got it. No, thank you very much, Brandy. All right. Um, one more uh, reminder uh, to visit www.nasa.gov for all your NASA news and NASA.gov slash Orion to learn more about the Orion. Thanks so much for hanging out with us today. And uh, sorry again for the slight delay getting started. Hope you had a good time. We certainly did. And we'll set off now. Thanks so much.